The Hyundai i20 is the big dominant player in the premium hatch space, really owns that segment. And now you have that massive new challenger that's come along, the Maruti Suzuki Baleno. So which car has the upper hand? Let's pit them against each other and find out. The Maruti Suzuki Baleno launches next week to be a crucial launch for the market and for Hyundai too. No, I'm not accidentally saying Hyundai instead of Maruti Suzuki. Hyundai has had an almost monopolistic run with its i20, hasn't it? Though the Honda Jazz has also done rather well since its arrival. Now the question is, will the Baleno expand the segment or eat into the share of these two cars? particularly the i20, which sells almost an average of 10,000 units a month. The i20 is the car to beat. A big hit, this is also one of the cars that Suzuki will have to contend with when the Baleno launches in Europe next year. The i20 is bold, roomy and has the best driving character of any Hyundai hatch so far, ever. Now, the Baleno isn't obviously good looking, but there are a few cues that have been thrown in which make it look modern enough. And what Suzuki is calling that liquid flow concept is the part that I really like. I mentioned this before on the show as well. It gives you a sense of space and size and also style along the side because it gives it a distinct sort of a look. It also keeps the window sill kind of low, which is nice. And uh, even though the car doesn't have the longest wheelbase in its class, just look at it and you think, Hey, that's got to be the biggest. And the same thing continues back here because you've got this muscle that bulges outwards, which implies a lot of cargo space as well. Again, it doesn't have the biggest boot in its class. But when you look at it, you think, I'm sure it can swallow up a lot of luggage. Good visual cues to have. The second thing which I do like is accentuating all of that. It's the use of this quarter glass. Now, a lot of cars have that blacked out element at the back or they have a lot of thick metal. This is smart because the quarter glass comes after the door finishes and which means that from the outside, again, the car looks nice and big, stretched, ample. And from the inside, you get a nice airy sense of space, thanks to that little extra light element. So very smartly done and kudos uh, on that particular design element. Where the car could have done a lot better is in the face. It could have been a lot sexier looking to make it look more appealing and more contemporary. Of course, the top end version does look smarter because you have that chrome element that comes through the headlamp and it does have the LEDs and it's a projector light. So overall, it tends to look a little smarter, a little bit Kizashi-like in its look. But uh, yeah, the car could have added a little dose of sexiness, couldn't it? On that is where I turn to the competition. The Jazz from Honda definitely looks modern and uh, very, very new age. The Fiat's Punto Evo is the beauty and then you've got the i20 which hands down remains the most stylish car in its segment. Now, it was with good reason that uh, we also awarded this the NDTV Design of the Year 2015 and continues to reign as we speak. But that's, I think, the big differentiator between these two cars then. The i20, when you look at it, instantly gives you that oomph factor. There's a wow kind of a sense. The first time you see this car, you stop and look at it again. That's what Hyundai wanted. That's what Hyundai got and which is perhaps one of the big reasons why the i20 has been so successful. The Baleno, very different looking and instantly implies a lot of space. It looks more ample. Visually, the two cars are so distinctly different. That's what's going to go for the Baleno. It's going to be the car that people are going to look at and say, practical family hatch, makes sense to buy this car. This one is for those who want that extra dose of style. In our last comparison, the i20 had managed to just about beat the Jazz and retain segment benchmark status and so we're sticking with just the i20 for today's battle. The one thing that went against the i20 was the lack of gadgets that the Jazz had. But now, just in time for Diwali and perhaps more importantly the Baleno launch, Hyundai has reworked the i20's interior to offer better colours better finish and the all-important touch screen which also has navigation. Now this allows the i20 to once again seem fully loaded. 
Now on to the baleno. Maruti has been really brave to go with an all black interior theme. In India, everybody seems to be obsessed with beige. And remember, when you use dark colors, it makes the space look a little smaller. Even though the black color is all around, it's not two tone, that's the car's trump card. You get a tremendous sense of space, as I've been saying, and when you're in the car, more so. Good headroom, excellent legroom, and uh, a nice airy feel to the cabin because of all the glass around and even the lower window height. I think all of that really adds up. So, very smart move on that front. I think a lot of families are going to like that. Rear leg room on the Baleno is more than the i20s, but surprisingly, it doesn't have a rear AC vent, which the i20 does have. The i20's rising belt line makes the rear seem more cramped because the window is a bit high. The Baleno's climate control system and in fact the overall central console layout looks nicer and trendier too. The Baleno offers four trims and all have dual airbags and ABS as standard. That's terrific. The i20 has six variants and neither are standard. It offers a driver side airbag in two variants and dual airbags in just two while ABS is available in four of the six variants. The Valeno has a very smartly designed and sexy looking instrument cluster. The Zeta and Alpha top trims also have the really cool TFT display trip computer with a great interface and even the real-time torque and power output display that we showed you last week. The i20's instrument cluster is informative but boring by comparison. Both cars have touchscreen infotainment and navigation, but in both, that's only on the top trim. The Baleno bumps up the cool quotient though with the Apple CarPlay USB. The top trims also give you keyless entry with a start-stop button, reverse camera, electric mirrors, and a tilt and telescopic steering. Both cars offer diesel and petrol engines, the i20 is now in desperate need of having an automatic option and now it will need that to also be a fuel efficient one since the Jazz and now the Baleno have a CVT petrol. The Baleno has the Fiat derived 1.3 litre DDIS engine that's a little gem. Tuned to deliver 74 bhp, it works very well. The i20 has the more powerful 1.4 litre U2 CRDI with a lot more torque and so it makes you wonder why Maruti didn't opt for the 90 bhp version of that 1.3 litre engine. The answer probably lies in these figures. The much higher segment best mileage claim gives Maruti Suzuki an edge, doesn't it? On the petrol side, the two seem more evenly matched, almost figure for figure. And even though both use a 5-speed manual gearbox, as I said before, the Baleno has a CVT option, which also delivers the same mileage as the petrol. I have both cars with me in their diesel avatars, as that will likely remain the higher selling engine variant for both of them. The i20 has a mature feel to it, coming across as very well built and engineered. That is what had really impressed me about this second generation car when it replaced the first i20. Now the i20 definitely handles better and uh, has a great ride quality. But overall, the DDIS unit is more fun, it's punchier and it's more sporty and so I've had more fun driving this car even though uh, there are of course some great things about the way that the i20 feels on the road. Now there is something to be said about the fact that uh, Suzuki has done a good job with mating this 5-speed manual gearbox to this engine. I've already talked about the immense amount of torque that comes out of this motor and given that when you're coasting along on the highway especially and uh, you're getting all of this great torque from the motor, once you cross 2000 RPM, you start to get the sense that, hey, you know what, it could have used a sixth gear. So I suspect that was done from a cost point of view to keep uh, the same five-speed gearbox on both the petrol and the diesel. But having said that, yeah, it could have definitely used a six-speed and that's an advantage that the Hyundai definitely has. 
That is the only real disappointment. The car's steering and sporty ride make up for it though. The diesel Beleno feels planted and the steering and suspension feel solid. The obvious tilt of the suspension setup towards comfort will go down well with Indian buyers, though the i20 also enjoys good ride quality as I said. The availability of torque as low as 2000 rpm in the Beleno and 1500 rpm on the i20 mean both cars maneuver quickly and effortlessly through city traffic. The i20's gearbox comes across as more refined though. And that is more or less true on the petrol side too. The Baleno does seem zippier and this is no surprise considering Suzuki's prowess with small displacement petrol engines. So what's the verdict? The Baleno appears to hold an edge in this contest, though I don't have the benefit of comparing prices as the Baleno only launches next week. But my gut tells me that Maruti Suzuki won't make an S-cross-like mistake and will be aggressive with Baleno pricing, which may even undercut the i20 substantially. If that is true, then I have to say the Baleno is the winner of this contest. I shall revise that statement once the prices are out though. <laughs>